What up, tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numat for all your magic card needs. Got ourselves some more Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Let's jump right in. Claim Jumper are Singleton Rare this time. Base, 3 mana, 3, 3 Vigilance. Um, if it enters and your opponent has more lands than you, then you can search for a Plains and put it on the battlefield. And then you can do that again, so... I mean, odds are you're not normally going to get double land value out of this card, but it's not terrible for a 3-3 base. I don't think it's what we want to be first picking here, though. I think there's really one best choice, and that's the Stubborn Burrow Fiend. This card has been fantastic. It is legitimately just a two-mana win con, and it has really good synergy if you're going to be playing Graveyard Matters decks, especially like Black-Green, right? Comes down on turn two, can attack for, what, four on turn three? Whenever it becomes saddled for the first time, mill two, then it gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard, and then it just gets better and better the later the game goes on, of course. So I think that's a pretty easy pick up here for me. Three solid uncommons to choose from for our pick number two. Clear shot, you'll remember this card. This is a reprint. Just a really good uh, punch effect, but that also pumps up your creature. So you can often two for one for uh, with this card, right? You target your creature, target something that's uh, just a random creature, and then if they're blocking, for example, or uh, you're blocking, you can eat whatever's blocking a lot of times, right? Revival, fantastic recursion effect for five mana. You put one of your creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield, the other to your hand, so especially good with, like, Rut Stain if you have some other grave dig effects like that. Form the Posse is another really, really nice one. It's effectively an X mana win con in uh, Boros, right? You want to cast this for at least two um, the majority of the time, but anything three plus is fantastic. It's probably just safest to stick with the singleton color green card here, as we're also passing like a holy cow. But I think you could probably take one of the other two cards if you wanted. Not that there's a need to. All right, third pick is a lot worse. If I wanted to go for synergy, the blood seeker is totally reasonable for graveyard. Um, Dance of the tumbleweeds is okay, although I don't think you want to be third picking it. Lone Shark is fine. Not a huge high pickup, I think. Scorn's the best card in the pack, but this is blue-black. There's nothing wrong with taking the best card in the pack because it's pick three. It's just doesn't really go with what we've already taken. But I'm okay taking it. Otherwise, Lone Shark or Bloodseeker are both all right as well. All right. Ooh, this is a really good one. It doesn't look... Maybe like anything special, but this is one of Green's best commons, I'm pretty sure. Three mana, two, three, that mills three when you uh, when it enters. And then you can put a land from among the milled cards into your hand, or you get a treasure. So you get value regardless. I don't mind Essence Capture. I think Lively Dirge is also solid. But yeah, no, this is an easy naturalist for me, and maybe we're going to lean towards looking to be more of a graveyard-themed deck as we get a... Lovely bandit here for our pick five pack one. Again, another one of green's best commons. It ramps, it fixes, and it can even add extra mana when you've commit a crime. Thunder is great. Thunder salvo is good. I actually like take the fall quite a bit. Um, oftentimes this is a removal spell plus draw card for one mana, you know. Tiny Bones joins up. Any number of players each discard a card. Wait. Any number of target. Oh, so it's a one mana. You can make your opponent discard a card. Then whenever a legendary creature in the battlefield, you control any number of target players each mill a card. Okay, that card's not great. You know what is great? Back for more. Again, right on theme with the graveyard plan. We're setting up six mana. This is a reprint. Instant. Return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one target creature you do not control. So you want some big creatures with this, but it is... Very easy to pull off a two for one with that. Brackish Crew. This, I think, is what? At its best in the uh, black red deck. Don't think that's for what we're doing so much. I have one rogue right now. Yeah, I wouldn't say green black has very many uh, outlaws. Uh, I guess the safest pick is just taking the Mirage Mesa, right? Seems correct to me. I don't like Reach for the Sky. The, this Buzzard is okay, but 
think the land is better. Okay, that's something to pay attention to because we did just pass that uh, Rackish Crew and now we're passing at knife points. So Red Black Outlaws is a thing. But we have a Festering Gulch and another Bandit plus a Rooftop Assassin. I think this is just a second Bandit since those are creatures plus fixing. Another Buzzard, Fake Your Own Death. I am not a big fan of the Lava Spur Boots. I think they're okay at best. I will note that uh, Trained Erynx, I think, is one of the best two drops in white. It's just so good if your opponent doesn't have a removal spell, because it's so hard to block in the early game, and it sets you up. 3-1 first strike for two that scries when it attacks is uh, kind of gross. Yeah, this is a good start, though. A couple of solid removal spells, a couple of really good early game plays. So we need to find the green fatties. We're looking for the beavers. We're looking for the um, the armadillos. What else? A couple of other ones. Ah, I don't know how to feel about Bandit's Hall. I don't think it's what I want to be doing. We have an ankle biter and a conduit. I don't think ankle biter is all that impressive. It is good with the um, fight effects and punch effects. But again, this seems like another place where taking a land is probably better. Again, not really a card I want to be playing in black-green. But I also don't think we're going to be playing the Sandstorm Verge in this particular deck, so... I do like the Link Breaker a lot. I think it's quite good in the, uh, the black-red outlaw deck. The GOP is actually kind of nice. It's a really good target for, uh, like, Clear Shot. It's actually fantastic for Back for More as well. Just a good graveyard recursion target. So with back for more, for example, you can uh, back for more the gigapede, give something minus two, minus two, and then the fight happens. So you can kill up to like a three power creature without losing your gigapede. This guy got like a freaking. Blaster? What is that thing? What is the best green-black value card? Yeah, maybe Rutstain still. All right, there's pack one. Okay, this is the new Oko. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Oko becomes a copy of up to one target creature you control, except he has hexproof. Draw two cards. If you've committed a crime this turn, discard a card, otherwise discard two. The minus is make an elk, and then minus five for each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of it. So yeah, obviously quite good. It... <laughs> No joke, the Sandstorm Salvager is one of the best rare or mythics, I guess, in the format as well. The pump ability targets all of your tokens, and it gives them trample. So I have won many games in this format already with this card, even though you know I've only had it twice or three times. This card is just phenomenal as well. But I mean, I already have Pylons, Mesa, and two Bandits, so like we can cast this Oko on turn three. Um, yeah, I'm not going to pass the Planeswalker. We also lose out on a Cactarantula. The Ringleader, not as egregious as Thief of Crowns by any means, but... Actually, you know what? I don't need to be playing black right now. We could be green-blue splashing black, too. Yeah, my black is nothing. Journey to Nowhere, that's pretty cool. In fact, what are we getting here? A Doc Arlock, Grizzled Genius, 2-3 two, for 2. Plotting cards from your hand cost 2 less. Spells you cast from your graveyard or from exile cost 2 less. So it just makes the plotting 2 less. This is a nice pack for blue-green, though. Nimble Brigand is really good if you can uh, commit any number of crimes. Just, yeah, drawing extra cards. Lone Shark. Um, Paladin is also fantastic. 
I think Brigand and Paladin are my top choices here. I don't think we care about the Arlock. Man, every time I play with Paladin, it's just so good. I don't have that many ways to target. Yeah, I'm going to take the Paladin. Honestly, this is just like the perfect common, things considered. Okay, some more good options here. Outlaw Stitcher has been really nice. And blue-green, it has quite a bit of plot, so I don't mind taking this here. At its very base, you can play it for 4 mana, right? Make a 1-4 and a 2-2. Two, two. But if you've cast any additional spells, that zombie's going to get plus 2, plus 2 for each of those spells. And then you can plot this for 5, so you can set up a turn where the zombie gets big. There's the giant beaver. Again, just one of green's more solid, big, random creatures. Phantom Interference, I've been really happy with, happy with as well. Two mana to counter a spell unless it's controller pace two, but then if it's later in the game or you don't have the counter available, you can just make a 2-2 flyer. I think I'm happy with the Stitcher, though. Primal Might. Target creature you control gets plus X plus X until end turn. Then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. This is the first time I'm seeing this in the format, and uh, this is a nice one. Like, it's good early, it's good late, and it can add a bunch of damage. We're passing a Lone Shark. Oh, and I guess a Krom. Damn. There are some really, really powerful cards, obviously, for the uh, bonus sheet slots. So while I do think this format is very princely... I think there are enough tools in the format to deal with the more princely cards. What is this? If you would create one or more artifact tokens, instead create those tokens plus a map and then make a token that's a copy of target artifact you control. It's more constructed fodder. Let's see. Plot. A copy of a creature you control except as a shapeshifter rogue in its edition. It's not terrible. There's also a commando here, which is pretty good. 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, or you can plot it and have it be a 5-5 five, five later on. Kind of like taking the bandit, though. Take the uncommon over the, the common. Ooh, another good pack here. I do not mind splashing the Badlands Revival in addition to the back for more. We could also take the Desert's Dew as a decent splash removal spell. But yeah, this card's been really good. I don't think this is as good as the, uh, I don't remember what it's called, the blue-green 5-mana spell. You draw 3 cards, and then you can plot one of those cards. I think that card's phenomenal, but Revival also still nice. This town ain't big enough. Costs 3 less to cast if it targets a permanent you control. And then you can return. So you can turn it into, why can't I remember the name? The uh, like blue and one instant bounce a permanent you control, bounce a permanent your opponent controls. Four for five, you can double bounce your opponent's stuff. My creature count might be a little bit lower than what I want it to be right now. But this deck looks phenomenal currently. Not a big fan of the Razzle Dazzle. Not a big fan of Metamorphic Blast, although I think it's okay. Is Gardener better here? Probably. I mean, this is not as good as Bandit in our deck, sure, but... Geyser Drake's probably fine. Just baseline 2-3 flyer for 3, and then... As long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost 1 less. So good with some of our... Instant speed effects, for sure. Yeah, the, the first pick, Burrow Fiend, not looking great in our deck, just because of the direction I ended up going. Nice Lone Shark. Oh, Phantom Interference came back. So did Hypothesis. It's a fun one. Ah, so this looks great. And again, we have one more pack to go. So even though I don't have as many land fixers as I would want, um, 
we have the double bandit and the gardener for fixing. Okay, pack three. <laughs> Double Oko the ringleader, you say? Sometimes you get it all. We also opened a leyline binding. It's a cool one. This pack was great for us. Soured Springs would be awesome. Uh, Beast Bond Outcast are also amazing, but yeah, okay. You don't, uh, you don't complain about Double Oko, that's for sure. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, you're probably just supposed to immediately start minus, right? Oko, minus, make an elk. Next turn, make an elk. And then decide from there. Uh, what does this one do again? Two blue, you can't cast during your first, second, or third turns of the game. It's a looter for plus one, or... Plot for plus one on small spells, or an until end of turn, whenever you cast a spell, copy it. Okay, so, I mean, the minus six is game winning. It's just very slow. Actually, Jace isn't that good. I'm still going to take it, because I want to play with it, but definitely not an Oko type of card. There's the Nimble Brigand. There is a Soured Springs. There's a Seize the Secrets. Uh, I'm going to be smart and take the land here. Cactarantula is great. Snakeskin Veil is great. The Rictus Robber is also quite good. That is definitely another black card we could consider splashing. I think I like the Cactarantula more. Although if there was another, like, Soltai land in that pack, I probably would have taken it. Wow, another really good pack. Gold Rush is a combat trick that makes a treasure. Possum is a 3-3 three, three for 3 at its base, but it has some bounce utility. I want to build an Intimidation campaign deck one time, but this is not it, I don't believe. There's another Badlands Revival, there's a Bounce, there's a Conduit Pylon. Let's see, we already have one Conduit and a Mesa. Ugh, I think I'm just going to take the Bounce spell. I didn't have much time there. Let's see, another take the fall. Actually, let me double check. Well, we don't need... Yeah, I mean, I don't have that many... Wow, I have... Severe... Oh, I have four rogues. We don't have that many uh, outlaws, but you don't need the outlaws to make this card worthwhile. Again, I think the minus one, minus oh draw card is generally good enough by itself. I could definitely splash the Tyrant Scorn. I don't think that would be bad or hard to do. Not with our mana dorks. Man, oh gosh. Land the Heist or Snakeskin Veil now. All of them so good. I don't know if we need more card draw. We already have a lot, but... Nice. Pick nine. Wield the Soured Springs. That's excellent. Yeah, I'm not going to need to run any basic swamps here. Because this is already four black sources in land, and then we have the three mana dorks. So we'll probably just end up cutting to one of the Take the Falls. I, I don't think I was supposed to take the heist. We have so much card draw already, don't we? Jace is a big card draw effect. Two Okos is a bunch of card draw. Lone Shark cards, uh, draws cards. Not that drawing more cards is bad. And it's got Heist, too. I mean... I guess I could cut the take a fall and run. Well, this also triggers our bandits. Eh. Yeah, I think I'm just not going to run the plan the heist. Maybe I do run the second take the fall instead. Because these are rogues, right? Yeah. Would have liked one more bandit or just one more cheap spell. But 
I don't think we're likely to get one back in the last few picks of this draft, right? Wow, we wheeled the brigand. I lied. Okay, that was phenomenal. So was the... Ah! What is going on here? Okay, I'm going to cut the gardener, I think. It's the worst of my creatures, I believe. And then I guess I will just shave one take a fall. My creature count's a little bit concerning, but I guess maybe not because I have Oko. Two times Oko. Oko is like two creatures... Her. This deck's cool. I hope we do well. We'll throw in those four lands, right? We don't want the ranch. Like I said, no swamps necessary here. So this is five, six, seven, seven. We do have more blue, don't we? No, we have more green, it says. I guess because of the top end. Yeah, all right. So eight green, seven blue, and then the pylons and the mesa can be any of those. Looks fun. Looks good. Let's go off to round one and uh, see if we can get some fools with Oko. So, Premier Draft is a little bit bugged right now. It's visually showing as unranked, but it is a ranked format. Uh, I am actually not going to play the Springs out turn one since we have the Brigand. We can go Brigand turn three into Springs draw card. The only downside would be that I do not get to plot the Paladin if I go with that play. Actually. That's tough. Yeah, I'm still going to do that though. I'm going to value drawing cards over getting the Paladin a turn sooner. I don't know if that's right. It might not be. See, now I can't cast Jace next turn as well because I didn't cast the Springs. Or rather play out the Springs. Hmm. Lock picker. Alright, ping them for one. Unblockable. Draw a card. Not bad. We're foretelling a lone shark now. I think I just like cycling this off, drawing another card. We really want to hit these lands. So let's go Jace, Uptick, Loot. Nice, there we go. Let's pitch the Geyser. Scry off Pylon. We already have Bounce. We're going to play out the Bristle and hold up Snakeskin. Very good. Crab into shark, draw a card. No attacks. They're going to go tapping, I guess. Let's go to combat. Fine. Loot. Oh, actually, you know what I can do here? I can discard the Cactarantula and then back for more it right now. And that's going to untap our bandits and let us hold up Snakeskin Veil again. <laughs> 
I don't mind not killing the key keeper because if they target this with the tap, I get to draw a card. Yeah, our deck is sick. Our draw's been really good. We might have been a little bit uh, behind if our opponent was more aggressive, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to draw a card. Go for the Veil. Now, they do have the, yep, block picker, but they can't target the Cactarantula. It has Hexproof. It's fine. Jeez, all right. So we're just going to discard the bandit now. It's just too many good plays. <laughs> oh my lord. I mean, let's just get another planeswalker down. I'm missing lands, which kind of sucks. Flying Vigilance, at the beginning of your end step, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, draw a card. And they're going to pop off the Oko, but that doesn't matter. We get to Jace Ultimate now. Oh, this is actually hilarious, isn't it? Whenever you cast a spell, copy it, you may choose new targets. I can copy the Badlands Revival, get back the Oko and the Jace. Oh, this is hilarious. I don't even know if that was my best play. It might have actually just been better to go Visage Bandit and copy the Cactarantula. Also, <laughs> only five lands still, what the hell? Five lands in 22 cards is nuts. There we go. Tap down a creature, capture sphere type card or whatever. And they have the key keeper too, so they clearly have stuff. I'm going to order the crab and the tapper first. Um, actually, I'm just going to go Naturalist and hold up both Bounce and Interference, I think. Not found our lands. Hypothesizzle. Sure. Discarding the draw two.
I don't even know what I'm supposed to be discarding here. I guess Jace doesn't actually do much for us anymore. I wonder if they have a Wrath. Plot and Outlaw Stitcher, okay. Canyon Crab. I guess I am just going to counter that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's the win. Unless they have like a path or a... Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, no, it has to be like Path to Exile here, right? Because that's on the bonus list cards. Nice. Well, that was an extremely... Uh, I don't know how to put that. Never felt like we were behind. Let's put it that way. And we're 1-0. Oh. Easy. Round 2 fight. Oh, we need to find one of our bandits for the turn 3 Oko. This is a little bit slow, right? If I don't draw something to do on turn 2 or 3, I wouldn't call this a good hand. Oh boy. Patient naturalist. Where were you a couple turns ago, my friend? All right, let's just uh, plot our paladin. Ideally, we draw a another land next turn, so I can go Oko plus Paladin plus Hold Up Veil. Right, whenever you commit a crime, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on the Zob, then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature card, you may have a Zob become a copy of it. Right. Didn't find the land, though. Brigan was good, though. Unlike Oko 3, I don't think you need to just get this online ASAP, nor should you. It's only plus one as well. Right, nice. I'm just going to start making Elk. I will say the double loot, though, is quite nice when we have Badlands Revival. <laughs> just try to stop me. Tyrant's Scorn. I don't care if they kill my 3-3. Three, three. Wait, couldn't they have eaten their Cactarantula? Oh, 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 never mind. It's not like the other one. They can only copy that thing once. Familiar Stranger.
Ah, so now they're gonna copy the Cactarantula, I see. I'm gonna do this before they get to untap. I don't think they can do anything for one mana, but why risk it, right? Fine. Need to do this before they can eat cards out of my graveyard. Because this can eat anything, right? Not just creatures? Yeah, exile a card. This is the token maker doo doo. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield in your control, for each of them create a token top in. That's a. Wow. Oh, under my opponent's control. Oh, so if I make a token with Oko, they get a copy of it too. Sheesh. That's not good. We don't need these bristles anymore. All according to plan. Hmm. <laughs> Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Oh, well, they're planning on committing a crime here. We can counter unless they pay two, though, which is pretty good. Nice. Yeah, having all these bounce effects in our hand are kind of useful. Actually, I can just double bounce this turn. That commits a crime. Oko's going to turn into our Paladin. Oh, I won't be able to... A I should have activated first, I guess. Whoops. You'll never guess what happens next. Right, that was a mistake on my part. Yeah, darn it. Whoops. So I needed to have double looted first, but it looks like we're going to blow them out here anyways. We can do better than drawing a 2-3 flyer, I think. Yeah, Oko should have one more loyalty, and I should have been able to double loot first. That was a mistake, of course. Nice, that Springs is committing a, a crime. It's fine. Play out the Paladin, play out the Burrow Fiend. Oh yeah. Still crushing here.
for each other non-land permanent you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. Some good grindy games here. <laughs> There's the Lazav. Two unknown cards in hand with plenty of mana. We're better off continuing to loot. Gross, okay. Yep, did have another kill spell. Don't think they have a creature they really want to copy this turn. Worth making them chump like that? I guess it's not. The Jace doesn't matter either. <laughs> Just try to stop me. Villainous wealth. Oh my lord. All right, well, that's probably one of the few cards there that wrecks us like this. Uh, yeah, that's pretty bad for us. Lone Shark, Cactarantula, Stitcher. Jeez Louise, I think we might have just died. Wealth so good. Oh, they ordered the, uh, not that it matters, they ordered the Stitcher incorrectly. <laughs> ooh -ee. Oh wait, what, what is the wording on this exactly? Is it cast? Oh, it doesn't matter, they're all cast. Wow, that's so good. Yeah, I don't think we can win anymore. Back for more. Uh... Can't kill Azov anymore. We need to kill the Salvager, otherwise they can give Trample to the huge zombie token. Oh, wait a minute. That's right, I can make Jace unblockable, or uh, Oko unblockable too. <gasps> Primal Might! That wins next, that would have won this turn, that wins next turn if they somehow can't kill me here. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's not very likely, but it is possible. They need to have nothing in their hand. We have an out. For the record, this has been my experience with this format. 
Very cool grindy games. Oh, I might be dead then, huh? If they're killing right now, I might just be dead. Block, block. Four, five, six, seven. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I think they might have twenty exactly if they have another removal spell here. Oh wait, no, they would have more. Let's off. Good copy. And they have the ping land in hand. But if they just go to combat, I think we have a small excuse me, a small chance. Wait, that doesn't give their creature trample this turn. Oh my god, I think we won. I want to make sure I don't lose to them having minus 4, minus 0. 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, actually... I also don't want to lose to them having the counter unless I pay 2, right? So 7 should be enough. 8, I guess I can pay, and the counter unless they pay 2. No, wait. Seven, eight, nine. So I should do it for seven here. Oh my god, I think we did it! Holy crap, what a game, dude. Well, we can probably just end the video right there because we ain't topping that one. Pfft. My god. Villainous wealth. One card in our deck. Dude, the brigand has been so good. Crazy, crazy game. Whew. Why never lucky? Why no turn three, Oko? Turn one bird, huh? Okay. Alright, I got one more chance to find one of my mana dorks on turn two. Darn it. So they are most likely, what? Blue-white is the cast on your opponent's turn spell. Deck. Yeah, Tapper's good in that deck. I think I'd rather lead with Flyer here. I mean, if they have a counter, so be it. But if they don't have a counter, then the, the Drake can block the Strix, you know? Sure. Yeah, Oko's not even that good here. What is this? This thing gets plus 2 plus 0 if they've committed a crime, so... I think my best bet is to plot the shark for now. Then next turn play Brigand plus shark draw a card and hold up the failed fording. Playing Lyoko just doesn't really do much, you know? Awesome. Not only is it a black source, it also triggers the brigand. Okay. Why that one, though? I guess they're both the same. Oh, sure. Um. 
That's fine. I think I like doing this now. Because they can't recast it this turn, and so now we get to go Oko on a naked board. Ping them for one. Draw two, discard only one now. Yeah, we'll just discard the land. All according to plan. Sure. Right all the big horn. Let's see. Make an elk. Majestic creature. Go to combat. Clear shot. I could have let them block as well, um, and then killed their flyer, but I think I wanted to just push the damage and do this. We don't really care if the bird kills Oko since we have the Badlands Revival to bring him back, you know? Oh, the assimilation. Nice. So they get to O-ring. Oh, they should not have... Well, I guess I only had tokens. Yeah, not the best Aegis I've ever seen. <laughs> That's funny. I guess. I guess I could just bandit the Stitcher. No, I haven't cast another spell this turn. Yes, I hit him for six? Seven? That's not very exciting. Ah, God, I guess it is just pass. Wow, lame turn. <laughs> I mean, we're still crushing them for the moment, but... For one one counter target creature this turn, it can't be blocked. Target artifact or a creature's controller puts on the top or bottom. Sure, let's just get back our Drake and kill their bird then. Uh, copying this doesn't win, right? No. So I don't have a way to win this turn, unless I loot a big creature to the graveyard. Uh, does that win? No, well, might have won. Uh, one damage, two damage, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I counted seven. In any case, too far ahead. Nothing the opponent can do, and now we're three and oh. Can we cast turn three Oko just one time? Well, this hand's, yeah, fine to keep on the play. I mean, we have the interference. It obviously has nothing going on, but... I'm sure we'll draw something. <sighs> Not playing the tap land since we want to hold up the counter. The downside about playing all of our Soured Springs out is that uh, now I lose the Crime ability for the Brigand if we have one, or find one. I need to find... Come on, Oko! Oko that turn would have been GG. Even Jace that turn would have basically been GG. Jace, where were you last turn? Yeah, 
Yeah, we discard the Paladin. It's a back for more slash revival target. Giant Beaver. I'm going to discard a land, and then we can play the Naturalist. And get another land, presumably. Oh, did not. We hit treasure and a bunch of spells. Okay. Hmm. It's actually a bit rough. They just have a lot of damn chonk. My back for more is not good versus this. That's good versus it. We put that in the bin and then we can back for more and fight their beaver. We just let the Jace take one, or rather go to one. Oh, if they have Skullduggery, I'm okay with that. That's fine. That's actually pretty good too, huh? But let's just main phase while they're tapped out. Wanted to draw land there so we could hold open the veil, but it is what it is. I mean, if they kill the spider this turn, we get to draw a card and we get to revival it back again, so. Deal. Love that trade. Let's get the Paladin back. I'm not blocking this time. Rise of the Varmints for three, two, ones. Okay. Double blocking here so we don't take any trample damage. I don't mind trading Pally for Pally. Right, if I just put Paladin on Paladin, they would trample over for one. This might also bait them into using something. Okay. Love it. Huh. I guess we're just gonna chill out then. Do I want to save my Naturalist? Let's see, they have seven creatures right now. If I bounce two of their spiders instead, they have five, I eat one, they have four, I take eight. They have no cards in their hands, so I'm just going to save it. Oh wow, they're still, okay, love it. Nice. I 
One of my creatures have trample currently, which is kind of unfortunate. Oh, they drew Rut Daddy. That's a good draw. Mm. Yeah, they're gonna get back the three one that draws a card. Man, what a draw. Good beats. I think we just sit on the mite for now. They drew another graveyard recursion spell? Holy smokes. Brutal. Absolutely brutal if they did. Oh, they just bought an. Okay, so. Actually, I'm not gonna block Rutstain, because I think that's bait. I think I'll just take the five and not block Rutstain. And that way they can't return the rut stain, you know, and yeah. Yep, that's exactly what they had. Sheesh. Defensive Primal Might is not very good, sadly. That's pretty good. Wow, I'm very close to like killing them here, aren't I? I'm gonna get greedy. I'm a pass. If they drew a removal, we were basically dead anyways. And now, look at that clear shot too for one I was talking about. So we can Primal Might for, let's see, eight? Yeah, it's worth it. Right? Seven, eight, nine, yeah. That means both of my creatures are lethal next turn. Man, played it greedy and got the win because of it, huh? Woo! Love it. Love it. Feels freaking a great man. Four wins. No losses. Nice grindy games. Very good grindy games. Okay, we've got the turn two bandit this time. In fact, we have two bandits this time. So where's the Oko? We're on the play as well. Turn 2 Bandit, turn 3 Oko. Even if we don't draw Oko, our hand's pretty nice though, right? Ooh, Malcolm, nice. 2-2 two, two Flying Haste. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, investigate. It's really good. Dead Eye Duelist and Mist Lands. <sighs> I guess we're just passing and we can full cast the interference, counter something, and make a 2 2 flyer is pretty great. They might not actually cast anything here, though. Alright, good enough. Nice, that's real good. Um, so we can do some action here. We can go like this. Bounce, bounce. Attack for three, draw a card, and then play out our second bandit. Excellent. 
And our opponent's just missing way too many land drops. Okay, they did hit a land there, so that might give them a chance again, but... Gila Corsair, it's a good one. Let's draw two cards. Oh, mama bad. Don't think I want to tap out of Bandit. But I could have plot the other Bandit there if I wanted to. I was debating not playing the Mesa since we have the two Bandits. Maybe I shouldn't have. But the thing is, we know they have seven spells in their hand, you know? Oof. That gives it Menace as well, right? Menace, Trample, Flying Haste. There we go. Um, you're falling behind. Okay. Even still, I don't even think we're winning by that much. <sighs> Holding up two mana? Oh, that's very good. But I have to assume they're holding up a counter, you know? Remember, their duelist does have reach, so I'm not going to be attacking with it here. So at least five spells in their hand, because they might have two lands now. Yeah, I'm going to block this. What does this do again? When it's put into a graveyard, they draw a card. That's fine. So we can Veil and pay for the uh, Interference 2 mana with the Bandit. Pretty big for us there. because I'm pretty sure that's what they're holding open, the Phantom Interference of their own. Alright, another Duelist. Now we can resolve some stuff. Do I want a Primal Might this turn? Probably, while they're tapped out, makes the most sense. See, if I do it for four... If I do it for two... 
two, I would tap one, I would get seven, and we can nap. Yeah, 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 this is better to do it for two, I think. Okay, we're gonna save that land next turn for the crime. Deal with the Planeswalkers too? No, target opponent. Build clear shot, flyer, and a land. Four five reach. Whenever you cast your second spell, deals two damage target opponent, scry one. Alright, that doesn't matter. Ping them for one. Oh, 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 don't. Yeah, gotta tap first. Now we draw two, discard one. Excellent. Um, I guess we might as well use the floating mana to plot here. Oko's gonna copy Brigand. We'll attack for two unblockable, draw two more. Excellent. Back for more. Only has a 2-3 flyer we can hit, so that's not super relevant. We'll just pass. One one flying for one. You got it. Sure. Could have also multi blocked it and then taken the fall. Actually, I should have probably done that instead. That was a mistake. I should have mass blocked it and then taken the fall and seen what they did. Target creature. Oh, they have a different card. Target creature. You control gains hexproof until end of turn. Untap that creature until it enters a copy of up to one other target creature. Oh, we can still do this in response. Now, multi-block is still on the table. Fortrix? Oh, that doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, we can just kill him here by getting our flyer back, right? Oh wait, no, these all have reach as well. So, let's see, how do I actually win this turn? I can block three creatures. No, if I just copy, wait, elk, elk, block two, three, four, five, I can put them to one currently. Go Jace, draw the card. That doesn't kill them. Loot. That doesn't kill them. It's left in my deck to kill them. Second Oko doesn't kill them. Block, 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 take five is what I'm counting. What is left in my deck? Oh, I don't actually have another way to kill them. In fact, man, I'm very close to dot to decking. Just a 
Archive trap will always just kill me. So there's not much I can do about that. They have it, they have it. It is not Archive Trap. Nor is that. Alright, GG's. I will play out the second Oko to let them know I had a second Oko. <laughs> No! They don't get to see my second Oko. How unlucky. Well, that game went a lot longer than I thought it would, but uh, in the end, we still pulled it off. 5-0. 5-0. Okay. It keeps going. That's close with the Brigand, but I think we have to mulligan that hand. Wow. Okay. Looks like we're going to be going to 5 here. Take the fall. Primal Might is so good with Brigand, but I think we have to keep it like this, right? And yeah, I am not going to get greedy. I'm going to lead on a tap land, turn one. Okay. So we can name green here. Dead I do list. Uh That's probably worth it. Especially since we have the this town ain't big enough to bounce it and recast it. So Okay, that's fine. So we get to just Oko next turn. I think we just immediately make an Elk here. Because their only creature has one power, so... A lot of the weird burn effects these days don't hit Planeswalkers anymore. In limited formats. Collective Defiance! I love it! <laughs> oh, that's great. Love it. One of the list cards that can actually deal to opponent or Planeswalker. I was really hoping I would draw the second Oko off the top and just be like, LOL. But I mean, it was a one for one at the end of the day, right? Oko traded for Defiance. Straight up, in essence. Mine Raider, they get a treasure. They're going to plot a Wolverine. Get to plot a Paladin. Shoot the sh oh no, I thought that was shoot the sheriff, but Treasure, treasure. Actually, the uh, zombie token is a rogue too, so if they do have shoot the sheriff, oh, well, I guess they'll be able to kill my knight. Why would they not attack with Wolverine? Okay, making a double block here. We have a lot of graveyard recursion, so eating tricks now, I think, is pretty decent. Let's 
Skullduggery doesn't do for one me. It can make a four power creature and five toughness for me total, so... Fine. Yep. All right. Totally fine. Good draw there, actually. I mean, despite being on a mulligan to five, like our creatures are bigger. We still have three spells in hand. Pretty good ones. Would have been nice to have five mana for the uh, double spree here, but can't complain too much. Kervik. Oh, that one is quite good. Whenever you commit a crime, exile up to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it, and you may cast the copy. And they have the duelist for the uh, easy triggers. All right, let's get them to go ahead and use their Skullduggery. I mean, I guess I could just Phantom Interference it, too. Yeah, they, actually, this is better off to Phantom, isn't it? Because they have the Treasure Dredger. Uh, dredger. I'm probably not going to be able to counter anything for a while soon. And that card is gone forever now. Like, once they've done that, it exiles. <laughs> That's pretty good. They mill themselves and puts more cards in their graveyard, potentially. All right, they didn't hit any black spells, though. But Oko part two off the top. It's not bad. We can actually cast both of our spells. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll just protect it now. The Geyser Drake allows us to cast this for one. Oh, right! They can recast it again, too. Jeez Louise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Kervik's so good. I guess I actually bounced the duelist here. So that stops them from pinging. For at least a turn. Kind of annoying too. My only creature that can trade with it is the uh, stupid 
Paladin unless I mass block it. Yikes. Oh, wow, that was a really good draw. <laughs> Copy our Paladin, I guess. I wouldn't say it was a really good draw, but it was a solid draw. I am definitely due for some number of lands. This is an easy double block and just hope they didn't rip anything. Now remember, they have the duelist to cast the servant again from their graveyard. The Karavik doesn't care what kind of black spell it is. It can be a creature, it can be an instant, whatever, you know. Though they will have to pay two life to do so. Oh man, this is a long draft. No plays. Alright, I think we can start attacking then. The fact that they didn't recast their Death Toucher tells me they could have drawn something to ruin me, like if they drew another Skullduggery or something, but I don't know if there's actually much I could do about that. That's not a good sign. They're just single blocking one of them. Alright. <sighs> what do you got? Wait, they can cast it at any time? That gets around... Oh, it copies it. Wow, that's interesting. It gets around the uh, timing restrictions. And they drew, like, a shock to kill my paladin? Wow. Pretty... Oh, no, they have the 2-2 flyer? Don't tell me that. Okay, yeah, it was. Sheesh. Yeah, their draw was great. Hot damn. Okay. Mill themselves again. Hope to hit a couple more black cards. Yeah, they hit two black removal spells. Holy crap. I'm getting soloed by Kervik and the Dead Eye Duelist. Bonkers, dude. That's insane, yeah. Now their deck is sweet. I'm on a mulligan to five, but I drew very well, so. I guess I just... God, they hit two removal spells, it's so sick. And any time the lifelinker hits me, or rather gains life, they just get another activation of Karavek. Alright, I guess I'm just going to let them tutor. the most I've ever seen. The Punisher do. And they've had some good mills too. That double... I mean, if they brick on that last mill targeting themselves, I, I guess they can still draw them naturally, of course, but that was just gross.
Oh. This was a little bit risky, because now they're not gaining life. They can sack and tutor for something, but... I mean... That was definitely a little bit risky. Hmm. Alright. This robber's a good one. Ah, uh, we bricked there. Am I supposed to hold this card in my hand? I am, right? No, I still have Jace in the deck. I guess for looting purposes, we're supposed to hold it. All right, back up to four means they can once again cast Shoot the Sheriff. Oh, and that might do her. I was due for lands. Again, this was a really good mulligan to five where I was not drawing as many uh, lands as spells, but... Yeah, I mean, if they don't have, like, if they have two lands in their hand, I can still rip, wait, Primal Might gone, am I stupid? No, I still available, potentially. That can't block! Primal Might there won the game. Crazy. <laughs> we still had outs up until the end. Good beats. Yeah, I mean, the KRVEC, 10 for one dust. Let's just win two more. Five and one on to game seven. <sighs> okay, well, we've been low rolling on these opening hands the last couple of games for sure. Jeez. I mean, at least this one's keepable. Right? Because all we needed to do is draw one land for Naturalist, but wow. Yeah, getting kind of unlucky now. Good beats. At least a third land is a third land, but... Alright, the black-white aggro outlaw deck. They've got the best two drop. That's too bad. Trained Erynx is so good. It's a two-mana 3-1 first strike that uh, scries when it attacks, basically. Good news is here, looks like they're valuing the scry over one damage, so... Holy smokes, that was the worst possible. We don't want a for we wanted to actually not hit a land there. Forest is straight up worse than hitting um, no land. That's sick. Jeez Louise, dude. Okay, I mean... Hey, you can't win them all. A couple of uh, unfortunate variance losses. That making it a 4-2 means I can't snakeskin veil it either. Yeah, this game's over. They get to attack with both. I take at least four, unless I want to snakeskin veil. I can... Yeah. Eh, good beats. 
Variance, variance. We won't draw mono forests again, right? Good. Alright, much better. Actually, I will lead on Conduit, because we don't want to draw any more lands right now. Excellent. Come on, Oko. Sure. Mm, I'll play the Brigand out. The upside is just way too high if we get to connect with it. Nice. Connect with it, we do. Oh, yeah. Let's go. That was a huge turn, of course. So whenever they commit a crime, they get to make a 1-1 mercenary once per turn. Pretty good. Um, oh, here's a fun play. Let's make an elk again. Let's play out the bandit pre combat. Have the Oko become a copy of the bandit, attack for three, and now we have four mana because Oko gave us an extra. So we get to stitch her and make a four four. Oko net us a mana there and allowed us to double spell into Stitcher. Or rather, single spell into Stitcher. Five mana pass. All right, let's double loot this time. Easy discards, of course. Let's go to combat. Making zombies aren't good. Elk's just bigger. I'm fine with him having some kind of trick. Because remember, Bandit doesn't copy the plus one plus one counters. I'm not sure what's going to blow me out here, but I'm ready. Well, they went to blocks. Oh. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to plot my... Decision pass then. Sure, that's fine. So they do get to finish off Oko, and actually the life gain here is huge for them, isn't it? Don't come looking for me. Okay, that doesn't block. Oh, well, this might just win, huh? Hmm. 
deserts do. This gives minus three. I paid one. Hmm. I guess I could save it and kill their assassin. They don't lose their uh, duelist anymore. The duelist is really bad because of the at knife point, but we have a pretty nice sequence here. So, they're still under the gun. And that makes a token. Yeah, they have a nice outlaw deck. They have another removal spell, last card in their hand. That's incredible. Jeez, holy smokes. <sighs> well, on the bright side, they do have to do a lot of chumping here, but... Man, what a draw. Actually, they messed up. They shouldn't have made the token for one extra mana. They should have pinged me for one. So they lost on one damage. Oh, wait. If they ping me for one, then they don't have the uh, the blocker. I guess they didn't do it wrong. I'm crazy. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Man, this is a long draft, and we're at final boss. Six and two. For all the marbles. We play against Tywin Lannister, our final boss. How are we looking? We're on the play and our hand's very good. Okay. Once again, I think I'm going to hold the Soured Springs, even though it might mean I don't get to cast Jace on turn four. Because the Brigand, the brigand into Soured Springs draw a card I think is better. Do they have the deserts too? Oh, okay. I am much happier if bounce is the best thing they can do there. Uh-oh. My deck likes to draw a lot of cards. I am going to need to find a way to kill that, huh? Guess I just get the Jace online. I'm going to get milled out here by that card unless I find one of my ways to kill it. That is actually really, really unfortunate. We do have some graveyard recursion stuff, but... I wonder if they're like dedicated mill or they just have a desperado or two. Yeah. A land and two creatures gone. It's not too bad. Ah, you won't break my resolve. Out. That's pretty good. 
Ugh, discarding the springs there really sucks, but we don't need it right now. God, if I lose to the Desperado. Yeah, milled three spells. That's quite nice. Um, oh, they just didn't want to play against Doko. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they gave up so quickly. I think the muck. Might have done a ton of damage to us, but hey, we'll take it. That was a long draft, but we had some really, really good games. Uh, I think the two losses were kind of just us not drawing our mana when we have a really good mana base. So, hey, it is what it is. Double Oko. Streamer luck. YouTuber luck. That was fun. I'm enjoying this format. We'll see Again, we'll see how it plays out in the next week or two. That's when we really get a better idea, but uh, I have high hopes. And, uh, yeah. We'll keep on drafting. So thanks for watching. We'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.